It's a true pleasure uh, and, and, of course, always a honor to be here for you with Richard Tuttle because we kind of celebrate uh, these months our 30th anniversary. I met Richard Tuttle as a kid. I was called director of the Galerie Yvonne Lambert and Albert Baronian in Ghent. And the first show I had to do, I was actually uh, the concierge or the cleaner, but the first show I had to do was uh, to work with Richard to hang a show of his beautiful little tiny aquarels on paper with these delicate, delicate self-made wooden frames. And uh, it took us at least three weeks to hang the show because the show had to hang on a very specific copper nail, 184 centimeters from the floor. And after having been worked for three weeks and a very successful opening, I got that one postcard uh, in the mail saying or suggesting that I would now be ready to change the order. So you can imagine that I was a little bit irritated, Richard. But then again, uh, your postcard and what you wrote, that was, and it's for me, the slogan of my life, also as director of Tate Modern. Once the order has been found, everything can be changed around. And that's thanks to Richard Tuttle. When, when did that fascination for textiles start? Did it have anything to do with uh, you getting to know artists like Ed Reinert, Agnes Martin, uh, and others? Well, um, in, I can say uh, uh, in 67, uh, um, uh, I began using uh, canvas uh, as the material of my work. And at that point, uh, I, uh, I would choose a material and, and look at it and try to get out of it the, uh, the thing that uh, both satisfied me and, and explored that material simultaneously. And that was the art, you could say. One of the aspects of, of weaving is that because we, everybody in this room is wearing a textile, but it's put in a zone where we have, uh, it, you could even call it invisible. It's put into the invisible side of things. But it can be taken out. When you dress in the morning, you make certain choices, and then it's invisible. So the, the, the textile and it has inherently this movement between the invisible and the visible. It seems to be that textiles right now is, 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 is almost like I'm sorry, I hate to use that word in your presence. It's like a trend. Mm -hmm. uh, we see in Paris, the Musée Guimet is going to do well, Asian. Well, I, I started the trend. You, you started the trend, OK. <laughs> so now we're going to look even, at these pieces. Even, even though we are all, you know, and I'm sure everyone in this room falls on the artistic side of things, you know, uh, this uh, field, and indeed, uh, you know, working uh, f for the exhibition we're, we're thinking of, it, we've first have to make a stab at, at defining the textile. I mean, at least saying what we think the textile is, and maybe that's right or maybe that's wrong. And, and that, that, that that has to hold water in face of the most scary art historian or textile historian who's looking over our shoulder. You know, but you that. proposed that we were going to look at one of these textiles or the tree in a scholarly way. Yes. Just a test. Yes. Can you okay. just very okay. briefly show us a textile in a yes. scholarly way and yes. then yes. 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 in an artistic way? OK. okay. When, when, I buy, when I acquire a textile, I love for it to, to, to feel that it's alive, you know, to have a, a kind of living just to, to move in space. I guess uh, there's, there's you're like the, you're like folds. The, the sculptor, sculptor, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the fold. And, and the, the the fold. And I mean, uh, this is uh, okay. So the characters. If you feel this, and anybody is welcome to feel this, you find you feel a kind of greasy, a greasy quality, and that offended me uh, at the beginning because you know I I, I clean things. But then, uh, as, a, as a anthropologist and as a scientist, I realized that part of the meaning of this is it's never, never washed. It's just, did this get, get knocked? OK. Uh, OK. This is um, because one of its intentions among the people who made it uh, is protection. And they feel that, uh, that the, uh, 
washing it would remove some of its protective, protective quality. As, as an anthropologist, I'm playing now an anthropologist or whatever, a linguist, you know that uh, the word cloth is coming from the Sanskrit loot, which means looting because when the slaves rebelled, the first thing they went for, because they were naked, they yeah. went to loot for cloth to yeah, yeah. get dressed. Yeah, so in a way, yeah. that's part of it. Because the most important thing about these kind of textiles is they look delicate, but they have a very resilient life. We, we've gone through uh, our, our definitions of time. Uh, you know, we, uh, especially in, in the art field, I, uh, I just spent a half an hour in front of a Giotto, and, uh, and I saw that he completely uh, took uh, time in the sense of past, present, and future, and space in terms of near, middle, and far, and took those two tripartite structures, melded them in one unified image. Uh, only a great artist could, could, could do. You know, and that's why Giotto is Giotto. Okay, know? but now to today you said it has to do with that we are beyond a certain interpretation of time that maybe people are suddenly and becoming massively interested in textiles. And, and that, that, uh, that the, uh, uh, the, what goes in the mind of a master weaver, which translates into their, the work, uh, is a definition of time that we're, uh, I think we're looking for. A lot of times w w when I go out to a uh, party or something like that, I, it's, it's very important to, to pick my outfit. And if I do it uh, well, then I have a good time at the party. You know? yeah. um, I, it looks like you have a good time yeah, this morning. I'm having, I'm having a good time. Yeah. Blue shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Camouflage, leopard, yeah. the new trend. You know, I think one of the, the problems that we all uh, have is, uh, you know, we can make these unities in our minds, but when it comes to the world, it divides. And, you know, it's going to wind up, you know, on this side ultimately or that side ultimately. And uh, I find... Uh, I like the unity much more than the division. And, and I guess as an artist, I spend as much as time as I can to hold off the divisive. Uh, uh, and I love art because, uh, I mean, art after all is a, uh, it's about unity. When, when I began, uh, you know, art was all about, oh, you know, how cool it is to separate science and the spirit, you know, and, and those are the big guys, you know, and anybody who can, you know, do that. But, like, I found, you know, one, they weren't, interest, they weren't asking interesting questions, uh, and, and if they, two, if they were, they couldn't never find answers that way. So, I, I, and I must say, uh, and, you know, I felt, you know, to uh, the world already seemed to me going in a global direction, and so why not look at some other cultures? You know, it's another access to the textile world. And, and, and on, a, on a, uh, another level, you see uh, science and the spirit are actually live together very happily, and lo and behold, that's where I found I could get answers to the questions that were in my head. You know, you can look at my work from my first show, and it's always been, uh, against uh, you know modernism, the tenets. It's always been trying to undermine the tenets of modernism. I've never been like. I mean, to me, modernism promised much more than it could deliver. You know, and and so why? And you know, to be to be modernist, you know, you had to like you know learn the catechism and submit and, and all of this for what? You know, like if you can, if you can give me what you you claim, yeah, I'll submit. You know, but you can't. You know, so I'm not going to do it. And, Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Tuttle, Textiles, thank you.